Hello, my YouTube yummies. How are you today? I just want to give you a quick view of a few pieces that are available. This is actually a tabletop, and I will show you the legs to the table in a second. This just really came out beautiful. Before I show you the likes, I just wanted to show you this little table that you guys were interested in that is now finished with resin. Also another very pretty piece also for sale. <clears throat> if you're interested in anything you see, art by Tammy at yahoo.com. A few trinket boxes I am working on that are not finished yet, but will be soon. Commission pieces being finished. The heart from a few videos ago. This is how that dried. That has been sold already. That sold very quickly. And the leg for the table. It's a pedestal table. It's got a nice stone-like finish, sparkly, it's very, very pretty. Alrighty, here we go. So in today's video, it's all about consistency and an original acrylic pour, okay? When I say original, I'm talking pre-bloom error, pre-house paints error. I'm talking Floetrol, paint, and water. That's it, okay? A lot of people confused. I see people trying to do ring pours using house paints and no, 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 no. If you are new to acrylic pouring, please, unless you are trying to get a bloom effect, use this recipe you are about to see for everything. <laughs> It'll make your life a lot easier. Once you get used to this recipe, then you can venture out to the pouring mediums different types of pouring mediums, um, whatever floats your boat. But for now, until you get used to it, either use the Floetrol in water recipe, which I'm about to do, or the glue in water, which I did in a video previous to this, which I will link at the end of this video. You will see a box pop up with a, a picture of a canvas with writing on it. Click on that picture and it'll take you right to the video. So what I'm doing here first is I'm straining my flow trial because there is a lot of lumps and bumps in flow trial. So I always do that before I start. Not sure if you'll be able to see them, but they're in there. So you got to get those out or else they end up in your painting. So we're going to put this to the side. Okay, so what do you do when you want to use different brands of paints that are different thicknesses? First of all, if you're new to this, I highly suggest you start out using something like a craft paint that you can get at Michael's. You can get these at Michael's too, except for uh, the Blick and the Pebio. But they sell these cheaper paints. I highly suggest you start out with these because A, they're a lot cheaper than what I'm about to use and B, they're a fluid consistency and if you use all the same brand, your consistency will be a lot easier to have throughout all of your colors. Whereas here you see I'm using three different brands so I'm going to have all different consistencies that I'm going to have to thin with water. But I chose to do this as a teaching moment. So what I normally do is first I mix up my colors, okay? So my recipe is 
and this is my recipe, one part paint to two parts Floetrol. What does that mean? That means however much paint I put in the, into the cup, I'm going to put double the amount of Floetrol in. But what happens when you're using something that's very, very fluid? We're not going to follow that rule. That's why I say it's better to use the same brand of paint until you get used to doing this because this using different brands tends to confuse people. So what I will do is I will go ahead and I'm going to fill up. Actually, no, I'm not going to do that. Let me do this the very simple way. I want to use this Pebio gold paint. Now I'm going to put in well, I was going to put in a grape size amount, but <laughs> we're going to say that's about a teaspoon of paint into the cup. Okay. Now I'm going to put in two teaspoons of Floetrol. It's more like a tablespoon, I should say. Okay, so there is your one part paint, two parts Floetrol, or what's known as a two to one ratio. Two parts Floetrol, one part paint. You're gonna mix it up. And you're gonna go on to the next one. We're not gonna even think about the consistency yet. We're gonna go on to the next one. I'm gonna remove the white for now because we're gonna have to mix a lot of that. So now I want to use this Blick acrylic from Blick Art Materials, which you can get online. The fluorescent violet. This stuff is always such a mess when you get it in these big bottles. You're going to see it's going to come out. It's not even going to be like you can see clear. It's so unmixed and it's so hard to shake into these bottles. So what I do is I dump some out. I'm not going to use all that. I just got to mix some up here. It's very hard to shake that bottle. Okay. So now I'm going to put my one part paint in, which we'll do that much. Okay. So that's about a tablespoon to two tablespoons of Floetrol. Now I'm eyeballing, you can measure to be exact. I've been doing this for a very long time, so I kind of know, plus when you cook, you kind of know how much a tablespoon is. It's just second nature. So we're gonna mix that and we're gonna step on to the next one. Now I have a heavy body paint. These are soft body soft to medium bodied paints this is a heavy body and usually they say it on the label what kind of paint they are if it's a heavy body this one doesn't oh yeah it does on the back so again i'm gonna put in one part paint I'm going to put this to the side because the cap's not going on. And I'm going to put in twice as much Floetrol. Okay? You can go over with the Floetrol. It's not going to hurt anything if you add more. So now that this is in here, you're going to notice this one is a lot thicker than the other two. It's clumpy, it's thicker. Very thick, okay? Compared to this one that is much more runnier. So again, put it to the side. Next color is going to be my golden magenta fluorescent magenta, I should say. 
And this is also like a soft body paint. This is somewhere in between a soft body and fluid because it does run off the stick kind of easily. I would say it's more of a soft body though. So I'm going to put in one part of that and it doesn't have to be a teaspoon. You could put in a cup full of this. You just gotta make sure you put in two cups of Floetrol. So we have that. And that. Mix it up and set it to the side. Now, the next one I have is a very rare, you don't see many people using this. And in fact, I really don't use it either. This is the most juiciest fluid colorant that there is in the line. So you have this, you have fluid, uh, which will be one of these. Then you have the soft body, medium body, heavy body, okay? This here, you're gonna do differently. This, you're going to put some Floetrol in the cup. However much of this color you wanna make is how much Floetrol you're putting in that cup. So I wanna make that much green paint. And then, what you're gonna do is add some drops of this green, fluorescent green. I'd say that was what, about eight to 10 drops. And it's very light, okay? But that's a very good consistency for pouring right there, okay? And there's a reason why I'm doing this, why I'm mixing up the different thicknesses of paints and you're going to see why in a minute. Okay, so that's good. And then the last one that I have to show you how to mix, well, as far as bodied paints are the golden fluid types. Okay. This is another one where you want to put your flow trawl in the cup first. and then add just a few drops of the colorant at a time until you achieve the color paint that you want because this is very pigmented. Okay, you see just those few drops. That's why if I, I could suggest if you wanna do pouring and can afford to buy a few of these colors, if you get like the red, yellow, blue, maybe a purple and a gold or something. It is more pricey. I think it's like eight to $10 a bottle, but you don't use as much of it. And it makes the perfect consistency all on its own with, between that and Floetrol, okay? So I'm going to mix up the rest of my colors and then we're gonna continue on. Okay, so all of my colors are now mixed with just the Floetrol. So now we have to do the consistency test. I want you to think about it this way. You have this in all the cups. What is the thing that's going to add nothing to the thickness of this? It, it's really not gonna affect it. The most thinnest out of the paints that you used which was this green golden paint, okay? So this is going to be the thinnest color that I have out of all of these because this paint has no body to it. It's like water. So this is going to be my consistency that I need to reach for all of these colors now. Now, the only other colors that I have that are extremely close to this consistency are going to be the fluid colors that I used by Golden. So that would be the teal, okay? It's a tiny, tiny bit thicker. So I'm gonna put literally two drops of water into that. Give it a mix. 
and now it is exactly like the other one, okay? So for all of my fluid colors, two drops. And we had quite a few of them here. So two drops in each color and it's going to make it match. And this is the most important part of pouring. You have to have the consistencies correct. Also, I had a viewer, I can't remember her name, I apologize, that reached out to me um, and I, I, sorry, I can't remember. She was struggling with her Dutch pour and come to find out she was putting no paint on the canvas. No matter what type of technique you're doing besides a ring pour, you should have white paint on your canvas first before you start pouring on them. Now, I'm sure I'm going to get a ton of techniques that I'm not thinking about where you don't need white paint on the canvas, but <laughs> you definitely need white paint for uh, a Dutch pour when you're pour trying to move the paint. The paint needs to have something to, to um, glide across, okay? So those are my fluid colors. And they're all done. Now, my next least thick paint would be these bottle paints. The violet, um, the golden. And the pebio also because it's really not that thick. Okay? The gold. So, for these, I know those took two drops. I'm going to start with four drops. And this one, I'm going to give them a mix and see what they're like after four drops of water. If they still feel too thick, which they do, I'm going to add more. You should really do one at a time. Just add a few drops at a time. And you're going to keep adding water until you get it to that thickness that you just saw. I'm going to pause the camera while I do that. Okay, so where my fluid colors only needed two drops of water added to them, these needed a teaspoon of water added to them. Now we're going to do the thickest one of them all, and that was the heavy body azurite hue. Okay, that's going to be the thickest. That's going to take the most water. So I know automatically I need a teaspoon. Okay. Automatically, I know that because these uh, medium body paints needed a teaspoon. So this one's definitely going to need a teaspoon. Also, metallics will always be a little bit thicker than other paints, other colors, because they have mica in them. So that's a teaspoon and a half, and we're ready to go. So you see... It started out with two drops for the fluid and up to a teaspoon and a half on the heavy body. So now we're ready. Now we need to do our white paint. So for my white paint, my measurement is one part paint, two parts flow trial, the same as these. But because I've got to cover the canvas with it, I have to make a lot more. So what I will do is... I'll put about a cup of my white Artist Loft paint into this bigger cup. I want to make a cup full of this. So just think of it, you can think of it this way. A third, a third, and a third. Well, a third and two thirds of Floetrol. I'm going to put my strainer back on there. You can see that goop better now. Gunk, goop. <laughs> you gotta leave a little room for some water. So this is a little bit less than two parts. But again, that does not make a difference. It's It won't hurt anything. These are kind of just like guidelines you want to follow somewhat to get to the right consistency. 
Now we're going to mix that up. And we want to get to the same consistency as the other paints. Now titanium white is usually thicker too. So I already know I'm going to need water for this and I'm going to start with a tablespoon of water approximately. It's a bigger cup, more paint. The titanium is thicker. Now, let's say you wanted to use a heavy body white. It would be the same um, rule for the heavy body that we mixed there. So we're good to go. That is how you mix your paints of different brands. Now, if you used just one brand, it would be a lot smoother. You know that you would only need the teaspoon of paint, two teaspoons of Floetrol, and two drops of water, and you're ready to go. So I'm gonna set up and we're gonna pour. I wanna do what's called an open cup pour. And that is when you take the lid of something that has an opening, or you can take a cup, a plastic cup, and cut off the bottom and place it in the center of the canvas on top of white paint, and you pour into the center. Uh, before I do that, I would like to add a few drops of silicone. I am not afraid to use silicone. Love it. I don't use it in my metallic colors because it seems to separate the mica from the paint when I use it. So I'm just going to pick, I have two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven colors. I'm going to pick four of them, random. And I'm going to put in just like three drops of silicone, okay, into each. Actually, these are smaller, I'll do two. One, two, this spot on treadmill belt silicone is the best if you ask me. I have most of everything you see, including these cups in my Amazon shop, the, the Lazy Susan, all of it is in there. Um, that's one easy way to support, support the channel, even if you're not buying art supplies, to go through the channel link and I get, you know, a few cents for every time that happens. So, but I put everything in there too for easy finding. So paint brands, tapes, everything. All right, so I mixed it in just a couple of times. If you want big juicy cells, only stir it a couple of times. If you want small, tiny cells, mix it in a lot, okay? So first thing we're gonna do is pour down our white paint. Right in the center, a nice big circle of it. And I'm going to pop those bubbles. I have some announcements. I'm going to make them now and the end of the video. Um, first of all, April 4th, I will be in Agawam, Mass, teaching a class. I will leave the link below. Uh, it's from 1 to 4. I hope you can join me if you're in that area. Not the link. I will leave the address, and I'm going to leave my email so you can contact me if you want to do that. Also, Sunday, March 8th, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Christina Welsh from Christina Welsh Art is having an auction for St. Jude's on her channel, and I hope you guys can go over there and support that. It's going to be a fun time. I will definitely be there. We could say hi to each other. Hold on one second. Just noted something. In my notice something in my cup okay so here we go I'm gonna just start pouring my colors in one at a time not much I'm gonna pour from up high so they sink underneath the white a little and there's no really not an order to this really 
I'm just going to start plopping them in there. I'm going to hold this down because it will start to float off. You can see all the pretty designs happening in there. Let's put some gold in. Then I'm going to add some, oh, that was a big clump. I'm going to add some white. Yeah, I'm going to let go of it. You're going to see it start floating. <laughs> Okay, we have some of this color. Purple, or I should say dioxazine purple. Some violet. Look at those beautiful cells. Some more white. And that was another big clump. Some more teal. Should have probably left the green out, but it's okay. If it's muddy, we'll do another one. I don't stress about stuff like that. I use a lot of that phthalo turquoise. I love that color. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to use all of it. I wish I had a little more white. Maybe I can add a little Floetrol to this and see if I can get a little bit more. Colors is just gorgeous. All right, I think. Put a little more gold and white. That is really sexy. Okay. So now, just going to kind of, there's a lot of paint under here. I'm going to torch really quick. And then we're going to tilt. Let's see what we could get. Nice and slow. We're going to tilt some of this ugly off of here. And by ugly, I mean this down here. I do not like that. I'll have to mix up some white paint because I don't think I have enough. We shall see.
See those nice, big, juicy cells? All right. It's wild, that's for sure. Okay, so what I'm going to do is pause and mix up a little white paint. So one of my viewers, Christine, thank you very much, sent me some big syringes. I am going to suck up some of the white paint I just made. Maybe. Actually, no, I'm not going to because I have to pull the plunger out. Okay. Now that that one is dirty, I don't know if I'll be able to get it out. Yeah, I can't get that out right now. Wonder why. No. Okay, we'll have to use that next time. I have to take the thing off first. Okay, so I have another syringe here. Sorry about that. I have to, uh, that plunger doesn't pull out like this one. So I wanted to fill them up. And that one must work differently. Okay, so what I want to do first is I want to put some color into this in the areas that I don't like. For example, right here. I just want to keep injecting it. Try to kind of manipulate this a little bit. You'll get those bubbles like that. That's not a big deal. Okay. You don't need to use a syringe. Um, you can use, just pour the paint in one spot. You will get those bubbles. They will pop. You just got to go through and pop them with the torch or whatever. But anyway, you can also, if you don't have a syringe, just start pouring white paint to force the paint to move and kind of change the outcome of what the painting looks like, right? So we have that area. And then I wanna do the same over here, but I'm gonna use my syringe. Christine, I know you're probably watching. Tell me how I get those plungers out. Okay. So now I'm going to do the same thing right here in this corner. And then also over here. A little bit more. Listen, paint pouring is a wasteful art a lot of times. So I know a lot of you cringe when you see all the paint on the on the uh mat. But it's just part of it. Yes, there are ways that you can. Help try to avoid that. Maybe a uh, catch pan or something. Use the skins. It's making a beautiful skin, I'll tell you that. And then we're going to come over here. And then what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some ribbons. So 
So in this cup, I have some white paint and I dumped a few of the colors into the cup. And we're just going to take it and dump right up through here to kind of break that up a little bit. And then we're also going to come down here and one through here. And that's going to be ending the video, my friends. Um, I hope this video was helpful. Just practice, practice, practice. And you will go far, I promise. Don't get discouraged. And again, if you're not doing a bloom technique, then do not use house paints for your acrylic pores. Go back to the basics like I just did with the Floetrol or Liquitex pouring medium and paint. Um, I think we're going to come up this way a little bit. We have just too much paint on here. So again, don't forget March 8th, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Christina Welsh Art. Check out that auction for St. Jude's. And my class in Agawam, Mass on April 4th, 1 to 4 p.m. I hope to see you there. Email me, artbytammy at yahoo.com if you're interested. Um, and until next time, my friends, happy pouring. Check out my Etsy shop and all the links below. United We Pour with Tammy and Lisa, my Facebook group. Hope to see you there. Bye now.